at the Brains and Brawn Fitness Centre in Morley, Leeds, Yorkshire. And I have just bumped into a legend, Henry Wharton. Oh my God, Henry Wharton, the guy that fought Nigel Bang, fought Chris Eubank, the guy with a big left hook, Henry Wharton. How are you doing, Henry? Thank you. Henry, I just, when I see you, it's like, there's a kid watching you box for most nights. Nigel Bing, Chris Eubank, you were in there. Show sure my age. Yeah, <laughs> my age as well. And I feel, I feel every bit of it. So Henry, what brings you here tonight? I've got my young nephew on. Oh, it's my nephew as well. Yeah. And uh, we're starting out with campaign as a boxer. He's only 11, so it's all early days for him now. This, yep. is where, this is where it all starts. This is where we come from. This is where every boxer that you'll see, all these biggest American superstars, this is where it all is. This is the groundwork from it all. You know, people don't see this. This is the the roots of everything. And you know, and you learn your trade, you learn how to grasp it, you learn your bad decisions and your tough battles, and that'll mature you into a blossoming superstar for the one day. Now you were known, Henry, for having one of the best chins in boxing. Never been dropped, I, I believe. Did you get dropped? And, well, it was a funny one. I think it was a slip. It was a, I was having a defence of the European title. Yep. And it was against Vincenzo Nardiello. Right. Yes, it was Vincenzo Nardiello. And uh, it was southpaw and it was, it was off. And it was yep. Off and, and he got me caught on this wrong side and I went on the floor. Yep. And I took my count because we're in a European title fight. And incidentally, he won the world title after that. After okay. I beat him. Yes. And uh, two rounds later, I stopped him. But it was, even if it was a knockdown, this was good world tour. But you fought the biggest punchers. Do you mean you win there with Nigel Ben? How big a punch was Ben at the time? Punchers, and I think, truthfully, a big part of it is we make, I was 12 stone for, for 10 years. Right. And I made 10 stone for that 10 years. And I was always champion of something whether it be Commonwealth, European or British, and world number one. So even to dominate and, and defend that title to keep on and to pursue the number one spot, that's hard. Because if we go to a gym and we, don't, and we train every day, and we don't get slightly bigger, we want our money back. Now, us as fighters who train every day, get bigger. And you can see what happens, and then you have to get like a, a big frame down to a, a smaller frame. That in turn takes your legs away, it takes everything away, so it takes the, the spring in your step away. So you don't perform like you would do in a gym set. When you're in your gym and you're performing really good and you're doing all your skill sets, when you get to the real stuff, you're unable to because of weight with you. And yeah. that, that's the harsh the harsh reality of it. What do you think was the missing link between Henry Wharton and World Title? You won everything else. I just think it was not no missing link. I just think it was uh, just maybe a little bit of luck and fortune. If I'd have boxed, when I boxed with Jinder Nardiello, he was world champion, of course. So after me, on the strength of me beating him, yep. he was given the opportunity because they didn't want to defend against me. I'd have boxed Sugarman Malinga. Yep. Malinga chose to defend against him first. So then after. Now the other one, I said, oh, that's all right. I'll fight him. Yeah. had a good set too, but I overcome. And that was on a four night. I should beat him. I had a good chance of beating him. Yeah. He didn't box me. So it is what it is. And I don't think I'll back. I do. I was sidestepped a lot. I do think that I should have boxed maybe Ben again. You box again. Why not? They were good They were good fights. They were good. It was epics in the day. Me and Ben never had a finish. We never finished the job off. Yep. I think now, years gone by, people used to fight each other a lot more. Yeah. They fight each other two or three times and set them a score. Yep. And they'd say, well, let's do it again. It's good money for both. And I want clearance. Yeah. Clearance for me with Ben wasn't, is, is, I love him. Yes. I think he's, he's super young and I think he's an absolute gentleman. But, one more time. <laughs> One more time. One more time. That's all me and him wanted. One more time. Just to make you listen. He couldn't help me out in a round. Or maybe two rounds. But I'd have had my chance again. Yeah, you'd like to have Ben. But, 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 like but, why, but why Ben? Not Eubank. Why Ben? Why would you want... No, same as Eubank. Even Eubank? Yeah, same as Eubank. Because Eubank had that one night where he had... He was on fire with you. Yeah, I had a, a 
but I damaged the eye. Yes. In the second round, and I was able to see for a long time. We always find excuses for fighters. <laughs> It was an it was an iconic night before the fight. Eubank standing up there with the light on. He's gonna fight Henry Ward. He's posing up, posing. And it was like your fight. Have you ever seen that ever happen? It was something out of like the WWF at the time. I think unfortunately people mentioned it to me and they said, "What did you, what did you see of the night?" We took as individuals. Yeah. To, to, to see, it. we're in a little bit of a bubble at that time. Yes. And unfortunately, people explained supporters and goodwill. They see it all, they enjoy it. We can't see it. And then, at the end of it, we've got to, you know, face a superhuman yep. And I, to be fair to him, great fighter. And I, like I said, the respect I've got for them fighters. And when I mentioned rematches and what we should have done, yeah, yeah. it's no harm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's with us. It's yeah, yeah, of course. They'll know what I'm talking about. Because it's pride. Anybody who beats you, can you find a way? Could I find a way? I used to lay awake at night thinking, how could I have done better? How could I have got better? We all, of course, we, we want to do better we all the time. Way. Yeah, we designed the program that way for a long time to find a way to win. These young kids tonight, I'm sure, they'll learn, they'll lose trying to win. They'll go home and they'll go and listen to the coach and say, why didn't you jab more? Why didn't you do this more? And then that's the way of progression. So, now you have your own gym. Talk to us about your gym, Henry. What inspired you to have a gym? We talk about progression. I think it's uh, now I come from a gym, like we say all of them do. Yep. And uh, I was always a student of the sport. Everything that my coach used to teach me, and I, t I say to the lads, when, when I teach them something, and there's say two or three of them, and the one kid gets it because he's worked on it, yep. the other two don't because they're, they're messing about this in yep. the nicest possible. I can teach the other kid other moves and other abilities because he's moved on, he's learned that one. Right. Then other two will have to go back to stage one again. Of course. All right, let's do it again. Right, why can't you teach me what Because you haven't passed that room yet. Yeah. So it's, it's building blocks. And the more you build, and I was a great student of boxing. Yes. The great I had that I become a student of education of boxing. Yes. Anybody who was, if a coach was in here today and he was talking about boxing, Yes. I'd still be the one listening. So, the boxing knowledge for me is I don't know anything about boxing. What I want to know about boxing is what I do. And I just, I love it to be a student to the kids, to be a teacher to the kids, and to tell them all about the pitfalls, yes. the ups, the downs, yes. the winning, the losing. And it's all a learning curve because they don't understand it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Henry, British, Commonwealth, European, World number one, why? What made you so successful at that time? And it was a damn good era as well. By the way, I was the only one at the time. I can say this. Somebody asked me the other day, so I am proud to... Yes. I was number one. There was only me and Mike Tyson at the time. I was number one in every BDB. WBC, WBO, WBC, IBO, right away from the ball. Undisputed number one. One challenger to every division. Because normally they'll be yeah, yeah. you, you can't box every yeah, yeah. perfect title. But it, I was around in a great year where you can mention, I can look on my CC. Yeah. And everybody on there is a name. Yeah. Because after I boxed uh, Virginia, yes. I said to Mickey Duff, because at that time, knowing what I knew about boxing and how hard it was. Do I move up the way? Do I, where do I go? I've got to find the way back to number one again. Nobody has given me a chance again. Yeah. How do I do this? Like, I would like to put the first one, do I move up and so on. And or where do I go in the career? I made a decision one day and I phoned Vicky up and I said, Vicky, it's not bullish, it's just the way we've become ourselves. I said, I want you to get me everybody there is. And I want the European champion then. I want you to find me, go to the European title, and what we'll do is just get me in, and I want to fight everybody that needs to fight in the short space of time in order for me to get back to number one. And I did. And I fought everybody. I think I fought three people in the top ten in the world within the space of four months, something stupid. 
Wow. And then I climb back to the world number one. So, we don't see that. But on the list of platelets, yeah. then three platelets are there. And, and that takes a lot of you. But that's the that's thing you have to show up. Like, right? so that's that's the And if, if you haven't got no time, you don't belong in this game. What does Henry, how does Henry Wharton do in this era? So middleweight or super middleweight, where would you be? You'd be super middleweight or middleweight? Oh, super. super middleweight. So in the super middleweight division today, you'd have, who would be around to the super middleweight? Let's think. James DeGale. Chris Shubank Jr. Um, Callum Smith. George Groves. Yes. 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 champion you've got to go and train in America, would you have done it? Yes. You would have gone stateside? Yes. I did before I went before I got to Ben, I went for four months. I don't think it played out really good because I think in a respect I burnt myself out and I took this thing out of myself. I was training like a, a lunatic every day in silk to be champ. And uh, at the end of it I was all more glad the fight was won. I get old, I got to see my like normal life again. I got myself away. And to lock myself away and uh, give myself a sentence. It was out of my body, it was out of my mental state, like my family at home. And if I'd have had somebody around me, let's say, like my family, who could have come with me, and, yeah. you know, I could have maybe talked. Balanced you out a bit more and kept you more gra ground in certain areas. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Just in the house on my own with the coaches and. Uh, and I think that I, that I lost a little bit of me. I lost a little bit of drive and thought and question. And we had a plan to box a bit. I think he looked up and Yang up, which I never really did. And played tight at this and it, it didn't play out like we... That you wanted it? Yeah, because I mean, the plan was to come late. But then when I started and I wanted to open up, I couldn't really let go. Because the plan was stuck. Yeah, because like we say, I was stupid. Yeah. Anyway, he told me to do something. I did it. So I run to the plan, and when it was time to let go, I couldn't let the end go. But listen, that's what we're saying. We should have another go. That's why it's always of interest to me to say, well, if I'd have him again, who to say that he didn't know him? Yeah. Well, but you'd like to have had the opportunity I'd to like do it. What do you think about this talk about Nigel Ben, Chris Eubank in 2019? Fighting again. There's talk about it happening. What do you feel about it? I'm buying the ticket. You're buying the ticket. I'm buying the ticket as well. Ticket. No, because we, we we love to we love to tell them to have got something. Yeah, they have. It's natural. I don't think they can ever hate each other or they love to hate each other. No, right, exactly. Or hate to love each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, I don't think that they go together. They do. They're just a match, and it's like, yeah. You why, know, it's why, got that. Why, yeah. Why does it? Why does it make such a bit of a billing? Well, yeah, it does. It does. Because we're all interested and we're talking about it now and we're all over me. Yeah, oh, like, he's 52, he's 52. Who wants to see that rubbish? I'm like, I do. I don't know. But, that, but is that reflection? 
reflective of what the sort of boxing we've got today and how it is today? Or what do you think that is? Why do you think that is? Like that people still want to watch Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank now. Is that reflective of, of, of the society or boxing today? Or the standards? Or? We all remember how big they were. And I always remember growing up as a young man. I was on the plane going to America when I was 17. Yep. Yep. I was in the boxing, uh, in America. Yes. And everybody on the plane, Wigan, and, and he was that, he was that big. Yep. In our world. Yeah. And same with Nigel Benny. He was that, they were that big. They, they become bigger than Lucas Cap. Icons. And we can't forget. And ten points to say, them two set a temper. Yep. You know, when, when we talk about the uh, European back, they took on the best. Yeah, they did. And, and that's why people are always stand up and big. Because there was, there was two of the very finest boxers. And there wasn't many people who would have come over and beat them. Yeah. They were that good. And I think that's good. It was good for the future of boxing because it says, well, they did it. They drink the hard way. And that's what you've got to do. If you deserve respect and credit from this sport, you can't mess it up. Because the public will. Yeah, that's it. Fair enough. Henry, thank you so much.